I am going to go ahead and mute you guys. And we're going to wait for everybody to pop in here. Alexa, Island Lights White. Sorry, whoever has Alexa. All right, just waiting for everybody to pop on. We're going to give it a couple more minutes. I'm not sure where everybody is today. I know for me, it's been a crazy week. I'm looking for something to read to you guys. Can't believe there's nobody else coming on yet. Oh, I think I found it. Maybe not. It might be a small intimate group today. Two more minutes and I'm starting. There was a message that I have. I wanted to read to you. And it was about the nutrition that they're, the update they're doing. And, oh, I think I just, damn it. Bummer. I think I got impatient and then I just saw it. All right, we got one minute and we're getting started. Maybe I took a screenshot of it. Or not. Or not. All right. I'm going to go ahead and get started. So hopefully people will start popping on. Um, first thing I was going to do is go over a couple of vision boards. I'm going to do mine because I never do my vision board. Um, so I made a new vision board. And I'm going to hold it up for you guys. So it, first thing it says is a little progress goes a long way. Because we always get down on ourselves and I get down on my own self for not seeing a huge amount of progress when I make big changes. 
like quitting drinking. I'm like, oh, I'm going to lean out so much, but it takes a long time. So little progress goes a long way. And then um, if it doesn't challenge you, it won't change you. That is just my motto. I say it a hundred million times a day. Probably I couldn't even tell you how many times I say it to people. Um, then there's a picture of me with my boys. And that is wishing that I could spend more time with them this year. Probably won't happen because they both have their own lives, but I will carve out time to make a point to try to see them. Um, and then live your best life because that is my mantra for 2023. It started out strong and then I had a coach step down. So really not living my best life right now, but it will get better. Um, and then Shred Tribe, obviously I want to grow my business. This way I can leave everything else I'm doing. On the bottom right where you see all the girls, that is our first Shred Tribe uh, retreat. Uh, eventually I would love to do another one. And then that is um, me, my parents, one son and his girlfriend. And I hope to spend more time with all of them. So that is my vision board personally and business. Okay. I'm going to go into Gina told me I can show hers. She didn't think she, there's too, so many people that have like birthdays and stuff today. So a couple of people are not here for birthdays. So I'm going to bring up Gina's. Today's meeting is about sleep, by the way, in case anyone was wondering. We are going to get to it. All right. It's coming up. Okay. So Gina wants to incorporate more fitness into her daily life. She wants to read, which is great because we all let that go. This is her family. She has two beautiful boys and a husband. She wants to spend more time with them. Um, she wants to build her relationship with her her husband. They're, she's strong marriage. She has a lot of love on her page. Um, she wants to try to get organized so that life is not chaotic. And she planned, and went along with that, she plans to start doing a weekly planner. So she has a lot going on as well. I love how she incorporated... Um, her family along with her regular life and says, sweet friendship refreshes the soul. I'm assuming that means me and a couple of other people that we never have time. She's one of my good friends and we never have time. We plan for lunch, we plan for lunch, we plan for lunch. And then it comes, we're like, oh, I can't do it. Something came up. So we literally see each other three times a year and we literally live 10 miles from each other. It's sad. But we all have lives and everything. So um, I'll pretend that that one's for me. That she wants to spend more time with friends. We'll just pretend. Because it does say, friendship is a gift to cherish. Never take it for granted and never neglect it. So we'll just pretend. Um, all right. So that's that. Does anyone else want to share their vision board? No. Okay. All right. So I'm not going to twist anybody's arm. So if you don't want to share it, no big deal. Um. Every week I'll try to share one or two. Okay, so six ways sleep may help you lose weight. And of course, on the inverse side, if you don't do these things, it could hinder your weight loss. And then I'm going to go over um, how to dial, what, what you can do to dial in when it's time for bedtime. And I have 14 tips to help you with sleep. So I'm going to try to go through this pretty quickly. I noticed that my the last meeting, my timer didn't come on. Remember, I got cut off. I didn't get that timer that it normally tells me. So, okay. And I ran out of contacts. So I'm wearing my glasses for the past week. Definitely planning. All right. So um, when you get shorter sleep, it promotes weight gain. Short sleep, usually defined as fewer than six to seven hours, has been linked to a higher body mass index. We've all been told that. You need to get seven to eight hours of sleep. It'll help with your metabolism. It'll help with your sleep, um, weight loss. Um, a lot of times, sleep is the missing factor. When people are like, I don't know why I'm not losing weight. I'm eating healthy. I'm getting all my macros in. I'm exercising. I have no stress. And then they're like, ding, 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 ding. You're getting five hours of sleep every night. Story of my life. Um, 
35% of U.S. adults are sleeping fewer than seven hours a night. The, net, the Center of Disease Control did a, um, a research on that. So that speaks volumes. Seven hours of sleep at night, less than that is considered short sleep. Raise your hand if you get at least seven hours of sleep every night. Wow, you guys are amazing. Mary, give me a hand of how many hours of sleep you get. Yeah, same. Same. And it's weird because a lot of times I'll sleep five hours and I'm wake up and I'm ready to go. I'm refreshed. I'm good. And then I get to sleep eight hours and I'm lethargic. And I'm like, God, I can only, I can need that only five hours of sleep. Or I feel like I need a nap more times after an eight hours of sleep than I do with five hours of sleep. It's weird. But okay. That being said, just so you guys know, you need to get at least seven hours of sleep. Do as I say, not as I do. Um, short sleep duration with a study has shown to be associated with a greater waist circumference and more belly fat. That's pretty discouraging. Study studies have also found similar associations in children and adolescents, which is sad because obesity is up at least 33% in children and adolescents. And I train a little girl, she's 13, and I train her four days a week, four, okay? Um, and I work her hard. And then I'll say, oh, what time did you go to sleep last night? She's 13, mind you. Oh, I went to bed around two. I'm like, in the morning? You don't have a bedtime, like eight o'clock, nine o'clock. Uh, and then I said, what time do you get up? She goes, I don't know. My mom wakes me up around seven, seven thirty. I have to be at school by nine. She goes to private school. So I asked her mom, cause I trained her mom also on different days. And I was like, why doesn't this girl, I use her name, go to bed. Why does she go to bed so late? She goes, she stays on her phone and watches TikTok. So I'm obviously the, the devil because I told her mom, I'm like, you need to take the phone away from her at night. For one thing, she's probably doing horrible in school. She is gaining weight, no matter how much we work out. She eats like shit, and it all comes down to not sleeping well, not getting enough sleep. Five hours sleep at 13? Horrible. Um, and we are all probably culprits of watching TikTok before we go to sleep, scrolling through Instagram, what's new on Facebook. And I'm going to get to that in my next thing, but that does prevent us from sleeping. Um it also has been associated with higher risk of obesity in different age groups. So infancy has a 40% increased risk if they don't get enough sleep. Let me let this person in. Uh, early childhood, 57% increased risk if you don't get seven hours sleep. Middle childhood, 123% increased risk. If you have a child that is middle childhood, I don't know what that really is, middle childhood. It's not adolescent, it's not teens. Um, they need to be getting their sleep. 123% increased risk. Um, I'm going to get off of this little soapbox. Um, so through the lack of sleep, they have noticed and did studies that negative it has a negative effect on your hunger levels. So it increases your hunger. Um, it will influence a person to consume more calories from higher fat and higher sugar foods. Uh, it also will affect your hormone, um, your hunger hormone, which is called ghrelin. Um, it will increase it, which makes you feel hungry. And then it decreases your leptin, which will make you, which usually makes you feel full. So not only are you going to be lethargic, but it's going to increase that hunger hormone and it's going to decrease your, decrease your, when you're full hormone. Um, getting enough sleep may help prevent increase in calorie intake and appetite that can happen when you are sleep deprived. Many studies have found that people who are sleep deprived report having an increased appetite and a higher caloric intake. That also goes hand in hand with you have more hours to eat. So you have to keep that in mind as well. Um, and I'm going to move on to the next one too. I'm just going to keep going. So when you get more sleep, it helps you make better food choices. You're more sound mind. Um, 
Lack of sleep alters the way your brain works and can affect decision making. This would make it harder to make healthy food choices and resist tempting foods. Also, when we are tired, we are lazy and we're going to grab anything that looks like it will be good. We don't feel like cooking. Um, I was listening to a podcast and a lady said I was so, she's a nutritionist um, that does a podcast. And she said that she went to visit her sister at her house and they were figuring out what to eat for dinner. And the sister's like, well, I'm starving. Let's just order pizza. And she said, Sarah, sit down and think about what you just said. You're starving. You can't wait for food. So let's order pizza. How long is it going to take for that pizza to get here? 30 minutes. In that amount of time, you can cook healthy food and eat before the pizza even gets here. Right? And when you think about it, you're like, holy crap, that makes so much. Like, I've done that. Like, I'm starving. Let's just order food. And then you wait 40 minutes. And then you're like, really? I could have had turkey burgers, sweet potato fries, my normal food. It would have taken me 11 minutes. So really, was I starving? Probably not. I was probably just exhausted. Didn't feel like cooking and was going to eat shit, right? Um, in addition, the reward centers of the brain are more stimulated by food when you are sleep deprived. I think about when you go to visit people in the hospital and the nurse's station has all the donuts and stuff and they're all eating them because they're exhausted and they're like, let me give me that sugar. I'll get it rushed. And they might not have bought them. Probably family members brought them for the nurse's station, but they're still eating them. Um, one study found that sleep deprived participants had greater reward related brain responses after viewing images of high calorie foods. Interesting, they were, interestingly, they were also more likely to pay more for food than those who had adequate, adequate sleep. Um, therefore, after a poor night of sleep, not only is that bowl of ice cream more rewarding, but you'll likely have a harder time practicing self-control. It has also been known that sleep depri deprivation leads to increased smell sensitivity to higher calorie foods and greater consumption. So crappy food smells better to you. Not bad food, like crappy food, like food that's yummy smells better to you than if you were to put a chicken and sweet potato fries when you're more, when you're more sleep deprived. You're not going to make the sound decision. Um, lack of sleep will give you poor food choices, higher calorie intake of foods, calories, sugar, fat, to compensate for the lack of energy. And that's what I just talked about with the donuts, with the nurses. Um, let me go to my next page of notes. Sleeping early can help prevent late night snacking. Of course. I always tell people when they message me and they say, I'm starving and it's like nine o'clock. I'm like, go to bed. I remember my mom actually used to do that all the time when she was on a diet. She couldn't take it anymore. She's like, I'm just going to sleep. It wasn't like a happy one. It was a cranky, I'm going to sleep. But um, I mean, I do that sometimes. Like I'll sit on the couch and I'm like, I'm starving. I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm going to bed. Good night. And then I'm good. Um, going to bed early may help you avoid the late night snacking that often comes with staying up past your bedtime. Pushing your bedtime later means you're staying up longer, which creates a larger window of time for eating, especially if it has been many hours since dinner. That happens to a lot of people when they stay up to like 11 or midnight. I don't think I remember the last time I've seen those hours. I mean, New Year's maybe, but I'm never. Even on the weekends, even when we go to a show, I fall asleep in the Uber on the way home at 10 o'clock. Um, if you eat dinner at 6 p.m. and you stay up to 1 a.m. every night, you're likely going to be hungry at some point between dinner and bedtime. If you're already experiencing sleep deprivation, you may be more likely to opt for less nutritious options. That's because sleep deprivation can increase your appetite and craving for higher calorie, high fat foods. Um, what's more, eating too close to bedtime, especially large meals, may decrease the quality of your sleep and make your sleep deprivation even worse. Especially if you have acid reflux, indigestion, or sleep disorders. Um, I also heard that if you eat chocolate before bed, it gives you nightmares. I don't know if those are myths or not, but... Ideally, try to limit your food intake two to three hours before bed if you are have a hard time sleeping. It has nothing to do with caloric intake or anything like that because your body doesn't know what time it is. 
Um, if you're hungry, consider having a small protein rich snack like Greek yogurt, a Greek yogurt bar or cottage cheese. So if you're having a Yasso bar, you're right on track. Yay. Um, let's see, poor sleep can increase your caloric intake by increasing late night snacking portion sizes and time available to eat. Um, potential benefits for your metabolism. Getting enough sleep may help you avoid decreases in your metabolism that can help happen when you haven't gotten enough sleep. Your resting metabolic rate is the number of calories your body burns when at rest. We all know that. And this could be affected by your age, your weight, your height, your sex, your muscle mass, and also sleep duration. If you're, if you're not giving your body enough time to get into your resting metabolic rate, it's not going to drop enough and you're going to have to eat more calories and you don't want to do that. 47 participants looked at how sleep restriction affected their resting metabolism. And it real, they realized that the experimental group that slept normally for two nights baseline followed by five days of sleep restriction for four nights had one night to catch up during sleep and during which they spent 12 hours in bed. During the five days of sleep restriction, participants resting significantly decreased compared to the baseline. That means that if your, your resting metabolism is what drives your daily intake, so if it crashes or goes up too high, it will th scroll, throw off your daily caloric intake. Because when I do your, your calculations, I use your RMR or I use your basal meta metabolic rate. Are you laughing because I can't talk? Are you laughing because you guys are sending each other texts about me not being able to talk it's been a very long day it's been a long week so tired and you're talking about sleep and that's all i can imagine is going up to bed right now. <laughs> it's almost time almost eight o'clock um I, listen i feel your pain i've been up since 3 20 uh let's see i'll move on sleep can enhance physical activity Sleep and physical activity have a close two-way relationship. A lack of sleep decreases your physical activity. A lack of physical activity may lead to worse than sleep. I don't know how much that really affects everybody because I freaking work out all day long and I go on five hours sleep. So um, I'm not sure how that really works, but that's what it's, I understand it. Numerous studies have shown that regular exercise can decrease the time it takes you to fall asleep and increase the overall quality of sleep. That is 100% true. If you're on the Zoom right now and I put one like this, I can literally fall asleep. And have no problem. You all could be talking right here on this Zoom. If I put my head down, I will fall asleep in seconds. Seconds. And I sleep straight through the night except to get up to pee. And then I don't remember getting up to pee when I go back to bed. I go right back to sleep. Um, lack of sleep can cause daytime fatigue, duh. Making you less motivated to exercise and more likely to be sedentary. You may expend fewer calories in a day when you're sleep derived than if you would in a proper nice rest. This can make achieving a caloric deficit for weight loss even more difficult. Lack of sleep can negatively affect your athletic performance by increasing your Stay with me. I lost the page of my notes. Let me read it again. Where was I just? Oh, by increasing your metabolism. <laughs> okay, bottom line. If you're trying to lose weight and not getting enough sleep, can, that can sabotage your efforts. A lack of sleep is linked to poor food choices, increased hunger, and caloric intake, decreased physical activity, and ultimately weight gain. If your weight loss efforts are not producing results, it may be time to examine your sleep habits. Through individual, though individual needs vary, most adults need seven to nine hours of sleep per night. Getting some much needed rest make all the difference in helping you achieve your weight loss goals. Tonight, try to be in bed at least 30 minutes earlier than you normally are. If you're not able to, try to, to read a book or listen to a podcast instead of scrolling on your phone or watching TV. All right, so now I'm going to give you some tips before you go to bed. I think I have like five minutes, right? I don't have my timer. Um, dialing your sleep is a major proponent for healthy weight loss, and it will help you bust through weight loss plateaus. 
help with your mood, energy regulation, and more. So banish blue light. Blue light is your TV, your computer, your phone screens. They make blue light glasses that will cut that out, by the way, if you have to be on a computer or phone late at night. Um, blue light is the same light that comes from the sun. Did you know that? So your body does not know that it's time to sleep because when the sun is out, your body thinks it's awake. Does anybody have blue light glasses? I do too. My boss at Retro Fitness bought them for me one time because he knew that I was always on my phone at night. He's like, you need these. Okay. Um, update your mattress. That sometimes helps with sleep. I um, try different pillows all the time to see if it helps with sleep. When we get used to our mattresses, we don't realize it, but it can cause discomfort, but your body's already used to it. So it affects your sleep. Eat carbs at night, which is fine. You can totally eat carbs at night. Your body doesn't know what time it is. Um, don't do drugs. That includes caffeine. So no caffeine, no cigarettes, no alcohol or sugar. It will do the opposite when it's time to wind down for your night's sleep. Have your last cup of coffee far away from bedtime as possible. Is anybody like me that they can have coffee right now and go to sleep in five minutes? I don't, I, I think our bodies have gotten used to it, right? We'll go out for dinner, I'll order a double espresso and everybody will look at me like, it's 10 o'clock, you're getting a double espresso? Yep, um, does not affect me at all. Have a bedtime routine. Raise your hand if you have a bedtime routine. Do you do the same thing every single night? That's the, one of the number one things about it. And I used to put um, habits in everybody's thing about bedtime routine, and then everybody asked me to take those out. But bedtime routines are super, super important. Creating a ritual before bed works wonders and tells your body it's time to sleep. This can include taking a warm bath or shower, reading a book, drinking tea, listening to soothing music, dimming the lights, washing your face, brushing your teeth, brushing your hair. I, do, I don't do all those things, but I do a lot of those things. Uh, stretching and rolling will help your sleep. A lot of times we'll get cramps or Charlie horrors or any of those things and your, your body is sore. Aches, pains, and stiffness can make sleep uncomfortable and cause irritability. Stretching and rolling help reduce those aches and pains and improve your athletic and sleep performance. You can go on YouTube and Google stretching before bedtime. You can also go buy a foam roller at like TJ Maxx or Marshall's. And like roll out your glutes, roll out your hamstrings, roll out your quads. That will relax your leg muscles, which is normally what keeps us awake because we get that restless leg. Even though you don't get restless leg, your legs are fatigued. They need to be rolled out. Uh, keep your bedroom cool. Your body likes to bring its core temperature down during sleep. If the room is too hot, sleep can be difficult. Turn on a fan or set your air conditioner to a cooler temperature before bedtime. You can also get a chill pad, which is designed to regulate your mattress's temperature. So you stay cool inside the bed. Anybody have a chill pad? Me either. Um, one of the uh, other podcasts, because I don't listen to the radio. Another podcast I listen to, all the guys have chill pads. And I thought they always talked about them because they promoted them or something. So I won't buy it just because it annoys me that they do that all the time. It's like every other sentence is my chill pad, my chill pad. I'm like, I don't care about your chill pad. So now I'm not going to buy one. But they always talk about them. They say that they're amazing. Uh, keep a notepad next to your bed. I do do this. Write it down if you struggle to fall asleep because you're already thinking about tomorrow and all the things you can get done. I totally do this. And I went to a therapist, um, not because I couldn't sleep, but just in general. And I told her I had so much on my mind, so many things going on. And she said, keep a notepad wherever you are. And so I said, oh, I can pull out my phone and do it in my notes. And she said, no, you don't want to use your phone because then you'll start scrolling and doing other things on your phone. You need to do the old school notepad pen and, oh, I just got the notice. Okay, notepad pen um, and write down whatever your thoughts are. If it has to be with something for work or anything, you have to remember to make a phone call. Once you write it down, it leaves your head and it eases your mind. And it does work because I do it all the time. Um, Exercise often, we're all doing that. Exercise releases endorphins that help you relax and tire you out. Just going for a walk can improve your likeliness of falling asleep quickly. Don't force it. Get up if you're tossing and turning and sleeping just isn't happening. Sit in a chair, just get out of your bed. 
read a book, do not grab your phone. It will help settle your mind sooner and get back in bed and then you'll be ready for sleep. Um, use light therapy or noise therapy. I do that. I have the ocean sounds every night. Um, and if it works for you, that's awesome. Uh, one time I went to a hotel and I realized I didn't have my ocean sounds. So I put it on Spotify and I put the ocean sounds from my Spotify. It was perfect. So you can bring it anywhere you want. Make your room dark, cover the windows to ensure changes in light won't wake you up. Um, if you need white noise, switch on the fan or open a window, download a nature app or a playlist from Spotify or Pandora. Get comfortable. It seems obvious, but it goes without saying that comfy pajamas, a soft comforter, a pillow, and a mattress will help you sleep well. Don't over or under hydrate. For all of us, we totally can relate to that, I'm sure. Too much or too little water and food before bed can disrupt your sleep. You're either going to need to get up to use the bathroom more frequently, or you're going to wake up thirsty needing something to drink. Work to get the balance just right. Who here feels like, and most of you on here are progressively losing weight, so, but who here feels like they can improve their sleep to help with their weight loss? I mean, I know, obviously me and Mary were the only ones that are not getting the seven to nine hours of sleep. <laughs> um, I mean, I do sometimes, but not every night. But like I said, I'd rather get five hours than seven to nine because my body likes it more. It's weird. I don't know. Okay. I opened up a new group in um, the app. It's the February workout of the day challenge. It's a week every day. There's a new uh, triple exercise that you can do. If you want to be in it, message me and I'll add you to the group. Um, I've been posting about it, but I don't know how much people are looking at the posts anymore. So I figured I would mention it in the meeting. Um, I love that you guys are all sharing recipes and stuff. I, I hired a virtual assistant um, from the Philippines. She's super, super nice. I actually have a meeting with her at 5 a.m. tomorrow morning on Zoom. Yeah, because for them, it's 6 p.m. Um, and she's making a new cookbook for me and I, it's all my recipes and it's all, I want it to be your recipes too. And it, you will have a, um, from Stacy I, or from Stacy Y, just so you have some, some like you could say that your, was your recipe. Um, so if you would send me your recipes, I would really, really appreciate it. Um, she's already has like 20 recipes in there. I used all the ones that I've always, that I, um, had published in a fitness magazine that's in my Facebook group and a couple of other ones. Um, and really recipes can't be trademarked or copywritten because recipes float everywhere. So it's going to be a lot different recipes, no recipes that were in the first one and um, a little bit different of a book as well. So um, please send me any recipes if you have them, because you know, I really don't cook. So mine are like more food hacks that are in there, um, but that's okay. I had a lot of air fryer stuff too. So no big deal. All right. Um, anybody else want to contribute anything before I get shut down? Is anybody going to go to bed 30 minutes earlier tonight? I am. Mike's in Orlando till tomorrow night. So I'm definitely getting off of this, taking the dogs for a walk and going to bed. Um, all right. So I hope you guys all have an amazing night. And thank you guys for being so understanding um, with the friend that had passed away this past week. It was just, there was no way I could fit everything in and do everything for um, his wife that's that obviously didn't pass, um, our friend. So um, I hope you guys all have a great week. We will do a workout on Sunday morning. If anybody wants to be in it, let me know. I'll post that it's going to be at eight o'clock. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. Hope you guys all have an amazing night. Thank you so much for coming on. Remember, always be badass and I'll see you guys. Bye everyone.